Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you. And uh, what I will do in my presentation is, is give you a short overview of what the EU uh, is doing in terms of cohort uh, integration and follow-up. And uh, I'm not going to give you the definition of what cohorts are, but just to say that through our funding, EU funding, we fund both disease-based cohort as well as population-based uh, longitudinal cohorts. And one, for those of you who are less familiar with uh, Europe and uh, European Union and its administration, European Commission, when we at EU level fund research, the requirement is for that research to be funded to gather at least three institutions from three different member states of associated countries. So already from the start, it is a collaboration, collaborative research. And in practice, we see that in our funding, whether it's core studies or something else, on average, between 9 to 11 partners are funded. That means that from, right from the start, this issue of collaboration across border is part and parcel of uh, the funding requirements. And uh, what you also need to realize is that we are uh, what we call open to the world, meaning that all applicants for all different regions of the world can submit a proposal as long as they are associated with the other three uh, institutions from within Europe. Now, we have been funding courts for quite a while now, but these data concern the funding on our, under our current research framework program called Horizon 2020. And we present here the data from 2014 till January 2019. So we have uh, more than 233 collaborative projects uh, ongoing for more than 1 billion uh, euro. And this framework program has not ended yet. There are currently calls for proposals ongoing and there will be new ones in 2020. So this is the picture as of January 2019. And uh, you will be receiving the slides, but you can see that it's a wide variety of cohorts that we are funding. And for example, when we refer to technologies, it means that it's data on cohorts where the investigators are looking at methods to better gather, analyze uh, the data, for example. But then you have cohorts that follow the aging process throughout the life course, those cohorts that specifically relate to rare diseases, et cetera, et cetera. While this initiative uh, initially was focused on, uh, or still is focused on cohorts gathering more than 100,000 uh, individuals, we uh, in the EU uh, appreciate all sizes of cohorts. So for example, we have a cohort ongoing on the follow -up, five year follow up of very preterm infants, donor infants, which is a cohort of only 6,000, but we believe that the value can be also lie in small numbers. Also, like was mentioned by the speakers before, what we believe is very important that these cohorts are representative of the general population. And indeed, that's why I think reaching out to other countries, to other parts of the world uh, is important. I'm going to present just a snapshot of a few projects that are currently ongoing uh, and that give a little bit the flavor of what, where the challenges are at now. Um, we have two projects that we are funding that relate to breast cancer risk and screening. And why I'm referring to these projects, the first is uh, Bridges, is one, they reach out outside Europe. Uh, Australia, Canada and the US are involved. But also they uh, address the issue of risk, as risk factors from breast cancer from very different perspective. So we as a funding organization uh, believe in the strength of tackling a problem from different uh, aspects as long as, or different visions, as long as the projects work together, which is what these two projects, Bridges and Vitas, agreed to do. So when we have uh, projects that uh, are selected for funding following our call for proposals, and they address a similar issue, in this case breast cancer, in the negotiation process, we ask them to collaborate together to bring added value to their work and worldwide. And this is exactly the type of efforts that this uh, initiative is taking as well. We all believe that by gathering the data, uh, being able to uh, pull them in a way or federate them 
uh, science will make progress, and which is important, and like Mary was saying as well, the court has only a value if the results of the findings can translate something meaningful in terms of healthcare or population health. To give you something completely different, which is um, in the context of the, the Zika outbreak in Latin America, we funded research to get a better understanding of the disease, its occurrence, its impact. And one of these projects, the Zika Alliance, developed a partnership in 13 uh, different countries all over Europe, Latin America, Africa, and they are following uh, pregnant women affected by Zika. Again, one of the reasons why I mentioned this project, like the previous one, the more partners you get in, uh, involved in the research on a cohort, partners coming from different countries with different regulatory requirements, with different health systems and, and scientific research capacity, with different priorities, you get a powerful discussion ongoing on how can we agree on the type of data that we collect, how we agree to share, first of all, within the consortium, and then outside of it. You will hear more about this recently uh, started project, the Sineca project. We realized that while funding cohorts, and I must say also with advantages in uh, technologies, be it ICT technologies or genome sequencing related technologies, we realize that we need, we can do more, but in order to do more and get better science out of uh, better results, uh, we need to build the infrastructures, we need to be able to uh, share the data, harmonize the protocols, nothing new for all of you under the sun, but we thought that the specific investment would be useful. And the Seneca project, you will get a presentation, I believe it is tomorrow afternoon, that really focuses on building the infrastructure and will be working on data standards, technical protocols, and software. And the final objective is to make population scale genomic and biomolecular data accessible. In a different area, again, in the field of environment and health, uh, we realize, and we are not, and I say we, it's not only Europe in general, realize that there's a lot to stir to learn from the interaction of the environment within the genetic makeup. And so we, we are funding research on the human exposome, which will be a cohort that, fo that will look at the interaction of the environment and the genetic makeup. This project has not started yet. Oop. Sorry. Well, it has not started yet. Uh, the proposals have been submitted as of 7th of April and uh, will be evaluated in the months to come. But this is, again, something completely different, but I think uh, worthwhile to be funded. Now, uh, the speakers of uh, this morning also alluded to these uh, challenges and opportunities for court research. One is getting a sense of what is already out there and how do you, can you federate them. The other part is related to uh, the infrastructures and tools to mine the data. An important question that has not been uh, come to the forefront so far, but is really an issue, is the sustainability. What are the funding requirements? How can we ensure the maintenance over time? And I must admit, and we're probably not the only one, uh, for the moment, our, our research on ports are short-term cycles. It's funding for five, 10 years, but we know that we need to find another solutions to be able to ensure a coherent and long-term follow-up. Then, as was mentioned this morning as well, the whole issue of access and sharing and the LC requirements. A lot of you scientists here in the room are struggling with this. It is related to, well, maybe to a certain extent, getting over, let's say, the scientific desire to keep the data to be able to publish, that's one thing. But the other more important thing is, technically, how do you share the data in <coughs> compliance with the different country requirements? And how do you share data while keeping uh, the, the contributor of the data, the person, informed and consenting? 
And uh, with uh, the notably, but not only, big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, we realize that a lot of more data that we can mine, but how can we ensure that it is done in respect for the ethical, legal, and social considerations? So that's another area uh, where we see challenges, but also opportunities for court research. And we look forward to the discussions of, of this afternoon and tomorrow because all of what I'm mentioning now is something that you will, are dealing with and will be dealing with. Uh, within Europe, uh, we uh, realized that we could also uh, do better work at bringing together what already exists. And that is, that's why we're funding a so-called coordination and support action. So it, it, it's an activity that aims to bring stakeholders together to discuss specific issues, in this case, related to cohorts. And you will hear uh, a, present, a more detailed presentation about this uh, project shortly. When I say perspective, I'm meaning the funding horizon. Um, we, will, we have submitted a proposal to our member states for the next framework program for research that will run from 2021 to 2027. It's called Horizon Europe. And under that framework program, we have a specific funding stream for health-related research, and where we have defined six areas of intervention. So six areas where we will focus the funding. Health throughout the life course, environmental and social health determinants, everything related to non-communicable and rare diseases, infectious diseases, and then research that links to the tools and technologies and the digital solutions that will improve health and care, and the challenge that we all know of making our health care systems resilient and sustainable. And for all of these areas uh, of research, obviously cohort research is welcome. And uh, in addition, what I would like to say, while the proposal for Horizon Europe and the health cluster that is spelled out in the six main areas of intervention, later on, meaning from 2020 onwards, we will drill down and put up specific call for proposals. So in terms of the discussion during this summit and some of the important priorities you will set, that will inform us in uh, developing our upcoming funding streams. And uh, to end my presentation, I wanted to make you aware, if you were not aware of it already, that there's an initiative ongoing in Europe that is um, initiated by our member states, so the different countries in Europe. And they agreed, they had a declaration toward access to at least one million sequence genomes in the European Union by 2022. And the idea is to make this information accessible and shareable. It is uh, to deliver a cross-border access to a genomic database. And why am I referring to uh, this declaration? Because it's a recent one, 2018. Uh, it is gathering more and more countries to participate in that uh, effort. Uh, and similar issues as to what, what you will be discussing here uh, will be put on the table, setting up the infrastructure, agreeing on the standards and protocols, agreeing on data sharing mechanism. So this is also something that will sh shape the future in a way. And uh, with this, I leave it for that. Thank you. I noticed that every time I come to a meeting, I see the number of signatures increase. It was 17, then it was 19, now it's 20. There's a question over there. Thank you very much. This was very, uh, my name is Arash Adamadi. I'm from National Cancer Institute. So how do you determine the priority of projects for Horizon, uh, you know, programs? I mean, in terms of relevance to Europe versus global um, um, importance? Often it's both. Of course, it, it needs to make sense for Europe uh, as well, but we have also international commitments in terms of in the field of global health that is quite clear. 
so we are committed to tackling non-communicable diseases wherever they occur. So in terms of our funding priorities, it goes both ways. It, is, uh, it can be initiated from specific concerns that live in the Union, or concerns that live outside of it, but for which the Union says we can contribute. And uh, non-communicable diseases I mentioned, you have antimicrobial resistance, which is a very different area. And uh, I think in terms of cohort funding, this is something where everyone sees the added value of combining the data. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Just yes. uh, Jeff Ginsburg, quick comment. I just wanted to congratulate you on the initiative you just talked about with one million European uh, sequences, and I, I uh, invite you and or the, the group that's uh, generating that project to be part of what we're doing here so as we can work together to create the infrastructure tools, the policy framework, everything that we're working to do. Yes, uh, and important is we as Commission are facilitator of that uh, initiative, not initiator, but I'll pass the word. <laughs>